G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Welcome back. Well, it's Monday afternoon here in Australia, so getting ready for Monday morning, and we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the markets. But first of all, I found something very, very interesting. Grayscale, they're still buying Bitcoin. So for anyone who's nervous and thinks, oh, there's going to be a retracement, and you know, I, I could lose some money, that's very short term that may happen. These guys are smart money, and the money's just pouring in. They bought another 15,114 Bitcoin in the last few days. This is the 15th of November it was printed, so that was yesterday. Basically in the last sort of week, the seven days before that, they're still buying Bitcoin. So they were buying it, you know, 15, 16,000 dollars and all the rest of it. I don't know what else I can say. If you're not currently buying Bitcoin and you think it's still, st still too expensive and there's going to be some big massive retracement, you know, my personal opinion, not financial advice, is think again. Grayscale is still buying it. And could there be some kind of correction? Absolutely. And there sort of has been over the weekend. It's pulled back a couple of hundred dollars, but it's not going to suddenly drop down to $10,000. Grayscale aren't going to sell. MicroStrategy aren't going to sell. Square Cash App aren't going to sell. You know, like, there's too much going on at the moment for anyone to think Bitcoin is going to have any major retracements. It's just not. It doesn't mean it can't have a retracement. It could pull back, you know, 10, maybe even 15%. Although I think that's probably pushing it to 15%, maybe 10%. I don't see any major retracements for quite some time. And I've said this in a couple of videos. Uh, until 25,000 or maybe 35,000, I don't see any major retracements. We could see one at that $20,000 mark. Obviously, people who bought in at around about 20,000 have been, you know, unlucky and just waiting for it to, you know, get back to even. They might panic sell, but most people, they're just going to hold. PayPal is absolutely booming. I think they did something like $25 million in the first seven days or something like that. It hasn't even been seven days uh, of their crypto launch they're going to continue to buy more bitcoin it's just going to keep going up and it's going to start to ramp up and really really start to move in the you know i'd say sort of more next year uh, again the people who are using uh paypal's crypto service at the moment it's only the early adopters from america that's it it's only the americans that can do it uh, it's not the rest of the world and again it's just the the early people who have understood what crypto is and they've just gone yep i'm getting onto it the rest of america who are still you know crypto skeptics they haven't got on yet they're still going to come they're going to come later when they hear what bitcoin's twenty five thousand dollars and it was three thousand eight hundred earlier this year i'm jumping in it's very very early but anyway let's have a read Grayscale this week bought another five fifteen thousand one hundred and fourteen Bitcoin, two hundred and forty one million dollars worth. Now it's mainly institutional buyers that are buying through Grayscale, and they're paying a premium for it. So let's say Bitcoin's worth fifteen thousand dollars, they're paying a, a, a. I can't remember it. Don't quote me on this, but I heard something ridiculous like nearly twice the price. They're paying nearly thirty thousand dollars for the Bitcoin in this trust. Uh, and again, if they think thirty thousand is cheap then really the 15,000 that it is at the moment, slash 16,000, is dirt cheap. All right, uh, so the company owns uh, 506,000 or $8.1 billion worth of Bitcoin. The company now manages a total of $10 billion worth of cryptocurrencies. So most of it is um, in Bitcoin, but we'll have a look. They are into some other things and something interesting I found. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which was created in 2013, is the company's biggest trust. The total value assets managed by Grayscale Bitcoin Trust now exceeds 8.2 billion. Oh, there we go. Jump from 8.1 to 8.2 in, <laughs> in the one article. Uh, the Bitcoin Trust holds 481,700 Bitcoin, which corresponds to 62% of uh, the 800. 14,359 Bitcoins in the ownership of publicly traded companies. Again, these figures are jumping around. So uh, it was 506,000 here, now it's that. So, you know, roughly around sort of those figures. 
Grayscale, a digital asset management company, this week bought another 15,000 Bitcoins. Yep, we already know that. Grayscale is the is among the biggest purchases of Bitcoin. Its total investment comprom- uh, comprises 2.29% of Bitcoin's entire market cap. So they're getting in heavy. And again, it's mainly institutional money that's uh, investing into Grayscale. Uh, you know, institutional buyers and hedge funds and that, they don't want to have to worry about uh, custodying it and all the rest of it. So they're happy to pay a premium. Someone else does it. They don't have to worry about getting hacked and all the rest of it. Grayscale has to worry. And, and again, they're most likely uh, got insurance for all that kind of stuff. So managing director of Grayscale declared this week, the largest capital raise week ever after the firm raised $262 million. He said that on Thursday, the company's the company raked in over 115 million in Bitcoin alone. So I, that's you know, that, that's a lot of money going into Bitcoin. But it's interesting, they had 262 million put in, uh, and only 115 of that went to Bitcoin. So some of it is going to other places. Uh, and again, we'll look at that. The company runs various trusts, pools of private investors, money that Grayscale used to buy up cryptocurrencies. Shares in the trust trade uh, publicly. Their prices roughly track the price of cryptocurrencies and roughly uh, would be a good word. It's Bitcoin trust is the largest. So again, they just continue to grow and grow and grow. And you can go down here and have a look what they've invested in. And I'll go over here. So there's their Bitcoin trust. They've got a Bitcoin cash trust. 46 million, 48 million for the Litecoin Trust. I've done a couple of videos about Litecoin and we can see that it's made some moves. It's the biggest move here and this is just uh, on the 13th of November, up by 8%. I have a sneaky suspicion that Litecoin might do something really impressive. I think again, it's very early in the Litecoin days. Litecoin didn't come till I think 2014, 2000. 13 something like that uh, again i'll have to go and check my facts uh i'm going off uh, memory at the moment but i think it was around about there and they got 65 million uh light coins again bitcoin is already you know we're we're on the the back end of how many bitcoin could be uh, accumulated now there's only a few million left uh litecoin's still got a number of them and again it's been regulated it's being pushed out to the public and all the rest of it I think building a position in Litecoin might be a bad idea. Now the dollar value is going up in Litecoin, but the Bitcoin value had been coming down. And I spoke about that the other day on a video, but something's changed and we'll have a look at that shortly. But we can see Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, that's the second biggest one. And obviously a lot of people are bullish on Ethereum at the moment. But again, Litecoin up by 9%, up by 9% on the day change, up by 8% there. Uh, and again, it's the third biggest, uh, actually not Ethereum Classic Trust, although I'm surprised about that. I couldn't imagine they're buying any more though. It looks like Ethereum Classic has maybe run its race. We'll have to wait and see. But again, Litecoin, uh, bullish on that. But again, they got some Stellar in there. 1.3 million, not a lot, but a bit. Uh, XRP, 8.5 million. Uh, Zcash, so we can see they hold a number of different coins. Now let's go over to here and I'll give this a bit of a refresh. 467 billion, so it's up a little bit. Again, we came down over the weekend, but now it's early uh, sort of Monday morning, uh, and we'll have to wait and see what's gonna happen. But there we go, 16,100, so it has started to push its way back up. This was down around 15,000, sort of 900. So maybe, you know, Monday morning's here, and everything's gonna start ramping up again. But look, you know, there could be a pullback, but we'll wait and see. Gas prices, nice down nice and low single digits would be better btc getting up around that 64 percent and again i i still expect it to get to 65 uh and again maybe even more than 65 we could be 75 percent but i think the days of bitcoin's dominance being at that uh kind of 75 and 80 percent uh value uh they're sort of numbered uh, it's it's not the biggest gainer anymore. It's don't get me wrong. It's going to gain in my personal opinion, not financial advice. But it's not the biggest one. You know, all these altcoins uh, are likely to pump more as long as they're good ones uh, and people get on board. I mean, it can be good and people don't get on board, so it won't pump. But these ones will pump by you know substantially more than Bitcoin uh, when they have their pump. But they won't. 
uh, they'll fall more than Bitcoin. So again, this is kind of the most stable and it's not stable by any means, but it's the most stable of the cryptocurrencies other than you know your dollar pegged ones. That's a different story. All right, so what's really moved? Let's have a look. Big movers, Thorchain, nice. Sushi continues to go up. That is on an absolute run. I thought that was dead for sure. And again, I'm not touching it. I don't want anything to do with it, but good on those people who were in it. Speaking about Litecoin, it's been up 9% in seven days. It's up 5% in the last 12, uh, 24 hours. And again, up nearly a percent just in the last hour. I think big things are gonna start to happen with Litecoin. You know, I'm not 100% certain, but I just have this sneaky suspicion that again, institutions and that, they're gonna start to wanna get into Litecoin nice and early while they can get a really good foothold of it because the Bitcoin, you know, they've kind of missed that and they have to pay a real premium, whereas Litecoin, it's still fairly in Litecoin's uh, infancy and, you know, again, they can get in at a cheap price and build a really good foothold. So that's, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna to have to start buying some more Litecoin. I've got a bag and a reasonable size bag, nothing, you know, too major. I'm no millionaire or even 100, uh, not even worth 100,000 or anything like that, not even tens of thousands. But still, I've got a couple of Litecoin and I'm happy with that and I think I might have to buy some more. Synthetics Network, still down over the seven days, but again, starting to make its way back up, not too bad. Let's have a look. What are the losers though? Because there's going to be some, all right, Uniswap took a bit of a hit, but again, it really pumped uh, and it's below the $4 mark again. Uh, so, you know, a pullback is not going to kill anyone. Celsius Network, so chopping around, maybe it sort of reached its peak. We'll have to wait and see. It is down 5% over seven days. Oh, Crypto.com, wow, this just continues to get lower and lower and lower and lower. I'm really worried about this platform. Uh, you know, look, it could turn around at any stage, who knows, but it's been going down for quite some time. I had the MCO token, uh, and you had to swap MCO for uh, CRO. Uh, I decided to just uh, sort of cash out, I guess, uh, and change it into some other coins. I didn't go into the CRO, and I did it at a pretty good time. So uh, I'm happy with that, but it's a shame for all those holders uh, of crypto.com. Filecoin, look, no major losses, really single digit losses. And other than, you know, maybe these top three that are nearly in the double digit losses, not too bad. And again, you, you need to look at the seven days. Most of them did all right over seven days, except for, you know, again, some file coins uh, just going down. Ample fourth, uh, of course, that was going to come down. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be sitting around a dollar. So it's getting close and should probably level out. All right. Now, let's go and have a look at Litecoin as I spoke about this. So this is Litecoin, and again, this is pegged against the dollar though. We can see after you know the pandemic crash, it got really low, it got down to $30.28. That is pretty cheap, considering at the moment it's worth $60. I think, what is it, $60, $66. So it's nearly doubled its value. If you're lucky enough and picked the bottom there, well, it has. it's over doubled its value. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't buy there. I think I was buying more around the $47 mark. So yeah, I was probably buying uh, around about here. But again, not too bad. I'm pretty with, happy with that. But you can see it's a general uptrend in the dollar value. And especially over the last sort of, what have we got since September 21st of October? There we go. Last sort of two, three weeks or so, the dollar value has really started to move. So that's good for Litecoin. But let's have a look at have a look at it against Bitcoin. We can see it's been coming down and down and down and down and down for a really long time against Bitcoin. But it was previously an oscillator. Usually Litecoin would pump uh, and then Bitcoin would pump. So now this uh, this is Bitstamp. It only goes back to sort of I think July 2017. So there's no earlier data. And again, this is when it started to pull back against Bitcoin and Bitcoin was rising. But anyway, the interesting thing is this. Has it found its bottom? So the bottom here would be roughly 37,000 Satoshis. No, that's not 37,000. 372,000 Satoshis. Is that the bottom? Because now it's in a bit of an uptrend. It pumped up, pulled back, and pumped up again. So is it now going to start to make some ground? 
look, we'll have to wait and see. It's too early for this to say that it's found the bottom uh, and you know has now done a trend reversal against Bitcoin. But again, the good thing is against the dollar, it's going up, but Bitcoin's going faster up than the dollar. So we'll have to wait and see whether this is now going to start to really make its move up. But not bad for Litecoin. And again, I think I'm going to start buying some more Litecoin. I think, yeah, there will be institutions that are going to pump this price up quite hard because they're going to want to get in early, uh, get a foothold. And again, once people start buying it from PayPal and, you know, the new people come in and they look at Bitcoin, they are, all right, I want to buy some Bitcoin. It's worth 100000 They're like, ugh. And then they see Litecoin and Litecoin, let's say maybe it's worth $500. And look, if Bitcoin's worth 100000 I don't think Litecoin will be worth $500. But just for, uh, for sake of this, let's say... Uh, that's the prices. People are probably going to buy Litecoin. The average punter is going to go. I can buy a whole Litecoin for five hundred bucks, or I can take the you know five hundred dollars that I have and buy a tiny minuscule bit of Bitcoin. Uh, they'll go to Litecoin. So look out for Litecoin uh, again. Not financial advice, just personal opinion. I think this might be a good buy, and I think it'll be around for the long term. We'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, Bitcoin. And there we go. Again, it's come back and it's just holding on this range. We got up here the other day and I said, look, there could be a pullback and it'll probably come back uh, and turn what was once resistance into support. And that's pretty much what it's done. This triangle, we'll just leave it there for now, but really it's kind of invalidated after today. Now we've got to wait and see what's going to happen. Is it going to you know, fall off? And there's people talking about um, Bitcoin maybe coming down to 14,800. And again, we had a little bit of uh, support here. And again, there's people saying maybe it comes back down to here, 13,000. I don't see it coming down to 13,000. That would mean someone would have to start selling quite hard. And I just don't see anyone doing that at the moment, particularly not uh, big companies who are still buying it up. Again, Grayscale. They are buying through all of this. Over the last seven days, they were still buying. Uh, and again, it's the institutional money who are paying a premium on the price. So Grayscale's buying it for, let's say here, 15300 The people who are investing in Grayscale are buying Bitcoin for, you know, probably double the price nearly, somewhere around 25000 30000 I'm sure. So anyway, long story short, I think uh, this price is going to hold. I don't think it's going to roll over. It's Monday morning uh, over in the States. The CME and all that will start to wake up. Uh, and I think the interest will be uh, bigger again. I think more people are going to want to continue to buy Bitcoin. I, I don't see this rolling any lower. All right, let me know what you think. Uh, are we going to go lower or are we going to go higher? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Again, my thoughts are we're going to go higher. We're not going to see uh, any major retracements. Look, possible. Yeah, maybe we come back and sort of roll down and tip off this. And look, it's not impossible to say that it couldn't come back down to 14800 But I just don't know who would sell enough Bitcoin right now to make that happen. I think the, the buying... Uh, is where it's at at the moment, not in the selling. Obviously, miners are going to sell it because that's what they do to make their money. But all the big businesses and that, they're not going to start selling at the moment. And the whales aren't going to sell at the moment because they know the price is just going to continue to go up. They'll probably spot buy every now and then to just help the price continue to go up. Uh, and eventually, you know, they'll have their price targets, whatever it may be, where they may sell some. Maybe it's 50000 for them. Maybe it's 100 and you know, 28,000, maybe it's 364,000. And that's just a, you know, random sort of numbers I'm throwing out there. They will have their price points where they're happy to start selling some. They won't be selling all of them. No one's going to sell. Well, I won't say no one. There might be some people, but very few people are going to sell all of them. I've got my price targets that I'm looking at uh, where I'm only going to scale sort of out and only the amount that I'm happy to sell. Uh, my long-term hodl is really, at the moment, all the Bitcoin that I buy up to $20,000, uh, it's a long-term hodl because I don't think Bitcoin's going to come back down below 20000 once we get to the cycle peak and then this new cycle low. I don't think it'll come down to 20000 So that can all be long-term hodl. After that, I'll have to work out, once we see the peak, uh, where my sort of range is of where I would be sort of selling from and how much Bitcoin I would sell. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hopefully you're on that game train. It looks like it's starting to make a little bit of a move. 
and I'll see you next time.